सो हाई एवरी वन एंड वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ पी आई बी टू फोर सेवन इन टूडेज क्लास वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द पी आई बी न्यूज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी एथ एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ ऑफ जनवरी टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड आई होप योर प्रिपरेशन आर गोइंग वेल सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन नंबर वन सो क्वेश्चन नंबर वन से इज विच कंट्री हैज बिन इलेक्टेड एज वाइस चेयर एट दी ट्वेल्थ सेशन ऑफ एफ एन ए इंटरगवर्नमेंटल टेक्निकल वर्किंग ग्रुप फूड एंड एग्रीकल्चर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज एफ एंडओ एफ एस इंटर गवर्नमेंटल टेक्निकल वर्किंग ग्रुप ऑन एनिमल जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज फॉर फूड एंड एग्रीकल्चर सो दिस वॉज दी ट्वेल्थ सेशन ऑफ दिस इंटर गवर्नमेंटल टेक्निकल वर्किंग ग्रुप एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस ट्वेल्थ सेशन इंडिया हैज बिन इलेक्टेड एज द वाइस चेयर ऑफ एफ एस Intergovernmental Technical Working Group on Animal Genetic Resources, right? So the correct answer would be India. But let's talk more about this news, right? So remember, this twelfth session took place in the headquarters of FAO, that is in Rome, which is of course in Italy. India had represented the entire Asia and Pacific region, right? India was the representative of entire Asia and Pacific region in this session, right? and this session also reviewed the implementation of global action plan for animal genetic genetic resources and how we can monitor the animal genetic resources diversity right so now talking about fao to ab dekho is jo 12th session mein cheeze hui thi those things are very technical and which are not important for the examination so you just have to remember that india has been elected as the vice chair of the 12th uh, at the 12th session of Uh, FAO's Intergovernmental Technical Working Group on Animal Genetic Resources, right? That is uh, enough from the exam point of view. Now talking about FAO, so remember, guys, FAO is a specialized agency of United Nations which works for achieving food security for all and to make sure that people have regular access to enough high quality food, right? Its objective is what? food security the major objective is, is food security right to ensure food security for all across the world right it was established in the year 1945 headquarters are in rome in italy and currently the number of members in fao is 195 including european union right so there are 194 countries and one member is uh, european union theek hai now talking about functions of fao in detail so number one it helps the governments and development agencies to coordinate their activities to improve and develop agriculture to improve and develop forestry to improve and develop fisheries to improve and develop land and water resources right and also it conducts research in the area of food security how we can ensure food security how we can enhance the production of crops right how we can enhance the uh, quality of crops it also provides technical assistance to projects which are working in these areas right which uh, the projects which are working for ensuring food security for all it operates educational and training programs and collects agricultural output production and development data so how we can develop agriculture how we can make the crops efficient how we can make the uh, crops protein rich and other nutrient rich right so all these things are being done by food and agriculture organization of united nations right so that is all about this news and which country has been elected as vice chair it is our pyara bharat option b india is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 2 question number 2 says where will Uh, the inception meeting of G20 startup 20 engagement group formed under India's G20 presidency be held. So this is guys important because before India's presidency there was nothing which is known as startup 20 engagement group. So this is a new group under G20 which has been established, which has been formed after India as India has assumed its uh, India has assumed the presidency of G20. Right. So this is important. so the first meeting the g20 startup 20 engagement group the first meeting will take place in hyderabad in telangana now in this meeting what will happen so basically the the stakeholders uh, jo log is meeting ko attend karenge right the participants will create a global narrative for supporting startups right how we can support the startups how we can create a better and efficient ecosystem for the startup how we can provide support to the startups via incubators accelerators 
how we can develop a research and development ecosystem how we can help them in innovating the new ideas so basically everything related to startup every kind of support will be provided or how we can provide support to the startups all these things will be discussed in this meeting right now talking about startup 20 engagement group so as i told you it has been formed under g20 after india has assumed its presidency it will develop policy recommendations on entrepreneurship and innovation and also how we can support the startups within the g20 member nations now the startup 20 will have three main uh, task forces number one foundation and analysis task force number two finance and number three inclusion and sustainability now talking about the summit level of event right if i talk about the summit level of event so summit startup 20 engagement groups summit will take place in gurugram in haryana in the month of july this year only 2023 so if anyone asks you about the summit of startup 20 the answer would be gurugram in haryana while if anyone asks you about the first meeting so in that case the answer would be hyderabad in telangana right so this question is about the first meeting and therefore the correct answer is option a hyderabad i hope this is clear and now let's talk about question number three this is a very very important question i believe this is a question you should come to the exam so how much wheat will fci offload from the central pool stock to the market under open market sales scheme for two months from the month of january to march 2023 now first of all what is open market sales scheme second why fci is offloading wheat from the central pool stock why fci is doing all these things so let's talk about it you will understand everything so the news is that fci will offload 30 lakh million tons how much 30 lakh metric tons of wheat from the central pool stock to the market <clears throat> through various routes under a scheme which is known as open market sale scheme domestic right now this will be done <clears throat> by fci to address the rising prices of wheat and atta in the country so as we all know due to the uh, food inflation in the uh, food items the prices of wheat the prices of atta are too much in the country currently so to control uh, those prices this step has been taken by fci so how this will control the prices so with offloading of 30 lakh metric tons of wheat in the domestic market the supply will increase and when if the supply will increase automatically the prices will go down the basic concept of economics right now approval in this regard has been given by a committee uh, which was headed by the union minister of home affairs amit shah right now talking more about it so remember this offloading will be done and remember it is only for wheat and not for rice because open market sales scheme is for both wheat and rice however here uh, fci will be doing offloading of uh, wheat only okay so the offloading of wheat stock will be done from the month of january to march 2023 right and this will be done via three routes okay the offloading of wheat stocks will be done via three routes number one 25 lakh metric tons wheat will be offered to floor millers or bulk buyers right whoever are the floor millers whoever are the bulk buyers they will have 25 lakh uh, metric tons of wheat in total kisi ek ko milega of course and this will be done through e-auction right this will be done through e-auction right this is important and a maximum quantity of 3000 metric tons can be availed per buyer per auction from a fci region this is also very important do remember it 25 lakh metric ton overall wheat will be off offered to the millers to the bulk buyers however per buyer there is a limit of 3000 metric tons okay now the second route through which this offloading will be done is to lmt 2 lakh metric ton wheat will be offered to the state governments or uts for their subsidy schemes okay and this will be done without e-auction there will be no e-auction in it and 3 lakh metric ton wheat will be offered at a concessional rate of 2350 per quintal 2350 per quintal to the government psus cooperatives federations without any e-auction okay so e-auction will be done only this case where the wheat will be offered to floor millers or the uh, bulk buyers however in these two cases where the wheat will be offered to the government entities there will be no e-auction okay 
so 25 lmt 2 lmt and 3 lmt which makes a total of 30 lmt which is the amount of weight that will be offered by fci in the market okay so these are the three routes through which the offloading will be done now there is a sale price cap also under this scheme so whoever whoever is buying wheat uh, through this route they will convert it into ata of course and that ata will be offered to a maximum retail price of 29.50 per kg so above that the ata cannot be offered so this is how the fci will control the prices of wheat and ata in the nation and the buyers who are willing to purchase wheat through this route they can register themselves on n junction service limited which is fci's e auction platform there is an e auction platform of fci which is m junction services limited so whoever wants to buy wheat uh, through this route right so they can register themselves on this uh, you know on this platform theek okay? hai now talking about open market sales scheme so the objective of this uh, scheme is to enhance the supply of food grains especially wheat and rice right this is majorly about this scheme is majorly about wheat and rice during the lean season when the prices are higher or when the supply is short jab price bahut zyada hai ya fir supply ki kami hai to in that case what fci uh, does fci uh, increases the supply right fci supply bada deta hai jisse ya to supply ki kami hai to supply puri ho jayegi ya fir prices agar upar hai to wo bhi niche aa jayenge right the implementing ministry of course is ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution and implementing agency i hope आपको पता लगी गया होगा अब तक दैट इज फूड कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड व्हाट हैपेंस अंडर दिस स्कीम इज दैट गवर्नमेंट सेल्स द सरप्लस स्टॉक ऑफ फूड आइटम और वीट एंड राइस हेयर इन दिस केस इन डोमेस्टिक मार्केट एट प्री डिटरमाइंड प्राइसेस थ्रू ई ऑक्शन एंड थ्रू वेरियस चैनल आल्सो बिकॉज हेयर वी कैन सी देर आर टू रूट्स इन विच ई ऑक्शन विल नॉट बी डन ठीक है बट जनरली ई ऑक्शन आर कंडक्टेड to you know to sell to sell the wheat and rice under this particular scheme okay so that is all about this news i hope this is clear so how much wheat will fci offload it is 30 lakh metric ton option e will be the correct answer option e is the correct answer and guys this is a very very important question i believe isme se uh, question aapka aana chahiye on the eve of republic day 2023 25 winners of veer gatha 2.0 were felicitated which ministry or ministries uh, launched this project in the year 2022 so you just have to tell the name of the ministry or ministries which have launched this project in the year 2022 so now let's talk about veer gatha project then we will come back to the question so as the question says 25 winners of veer gatha project 2.0 were felicitated at an at an event organized on the eve of republic day theek hai ye baat clear ho gayi now the winners were given a cash prize of rupees 10000 and a certificate now let's talk about veer gatha project what actually it is ye hai kya veer gatha project iske bare mein samajh lete hain thoda sa so remember the objective of this project is to disseminate is to showcase is to present the details of acts of bravery or sacrifices and life stories of those officers or personnel of armed forces right other lawfully constituted forces and civilians who have done exceptionally well in the area of bravery right who has who have uh, showcased their bravery in the society right so to represent to disseminate the details of those acts of bravery this veer gatha project was launched in the year 2022 ministry is the ministry of defense in collaboration with ministry of education now you must be wondering what is the use of ministry of education is uh, education here kya zarurat hai ministry of education ki so let me tell you that so basically guys what happens under this scheme is what is the objective the government wants to disseminate those acts of bravery of uh, civilians and uh, the soldiers and other officers right they want to disseminate so how they will disseminate so basically what happens is that school students are motivated to do projects or activities based on gallantry award winners right to disseminate the details of their action acts of bravery right so students are motivated to to do certain projects or activities or research or to create a models based on 
the gallantry award winners to disseminate uh, all the information about their acts of bravery right and therefore this veer gadha project <coughs> is open for all the schools in all the states <coughs> and ut's included all the schools which are affiliated to cbsc that is central board of secondary education okay i hope veer gadha project is clear so which ministry or ministries are these these are ministry of defense and ministry of education therefore the correct answer will be option d a and b will be the correct answer क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव पे आ जाते हैं इसी बात पे आइडेंटिफाई इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट अबाउट जीवन रक्षा पदक सीरीज ऑफ अवार्ड सो दीज आर अनदर सीरीज ऑफ अवार्ड्स एंड दी विनर्स वर फेलिसिटेटेड अगेन ऑन दी ईव ऑफ द रिपब्लिक डे सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट एंड देन वी विल कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन सो रिमेंबर प्रेसिडेंट द्रौपदी मुर्मू हैज अप्रूव दी कॉन्फर्मेंट ऑफ जीवन रक्षा पदक सीरीज ऑफ अवार्ड फॉर द ईयर टू एंड टोटल फोर्टी टोटल फोर्टी थ्री पर्सन विल बी फेलिसिटेटेड अंडर दीज सीरीज ऑफ अवार्ड नाउ रिमेंबर दर्ड्स आर गिवेन इन थ्री कैटेगरी नंबर वन सर्वोत्तम जीवन सर्वोत्तम जीवन रक्षा पदक सेवन पर्सन विल बी अवॉर्डेड अंडर दिस देन उत्तम जीवन रक्षा पदक एट पर्सन विल बी अवॉर्डेड अंडर दिस एंड देन जीवन रक्षा पदक सिंपली ट्वेंटी एट पीपल ट्वेंटी एट पर्सन विल बी अवॉर्डेड इन इन दिस नाउ फोर पर्सन राइट देर आर फोर सच पर्सन <clears throat> which will be awarded posthumously matlab after their death theek hai now talking about these awards so remember the awards are given to a person right the awards are given to a person who has sacrificed his life or who has done a brave an act of bravery to save the life of a person right koi person agar dusre insaan ki jaan bachata hai so for such act of bravery these awards are given right established year 1961 and these are basically an offshoot of ashok chakra awards theek hai ashok chakra gallantry awards jo hai ye unka offshoot hai the nodal ministry to present these awards is the ministry of home affairs headed by amit shah and as i already told you the awards are given in three categories sarvottam jeevan raksha padak are given to those who have uh, you know who have rescued a person's life from a very great danger उत्तम जीवन रक्षा पदक अवार्ड्स आर गिवन टू दो लाइफ ऑफ अनदर पर्सन फ्रॉम ग्रेट डेंजर राइट हेयर इट द वर्ड वेरी ग्रेट डेंजर हेयर ग्रेट डेंजर एंड जीवन रक्षा पदक अवार्ड्स आर गिवन टू दो हैव सेव द लाइफ ऑफ अ पर्सन अंडर सर्कमस्टांसिस ऑफ ग्रेट बॉडली इंजरीज टू द रेस्क्यू ठीक है सो दीज आर द्री टाइप्स ऑफ अवार्ड थ्री सीरीज ऑफ अवार्ड विच आर गिवन अंडर इट and talking about eligibility who can avail these awards to persons of all walks of life right ab isme aisa to hai nahi na ki keval police walon ko hi jaan bachane ke liye award milega agar maine kisi ki jaan bachayi to i am also eligible for that ya aapne kisi ki jaan bachayi to you are also eligible uh, for these awards now rewards ki baat kare so medal certificate and certain amount of uh, uh, financial announce allowance right which is which in case of sarvottam jeevan raksha padak is 2 lakh उत्तम जीवन रक्षा पदक इट इज वन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड जीवन रक्षा पदक इट इज रुपीज वन लाख ठीक है सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन एंड आइडेंटिफाई एन इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो दे आर अवॉर्डेड टू अ पर्सन फॉर मेरिटोरियस एक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन नेचर इन सेविंग द लाइफ ऑफ अ पर्सन बिल्कुल सही बात है दीज आर गिवन इन थ्री कैटेगरीज करेक्ट पर्सन ऑफ ऑल वर्क ऑफ लाइफ आर एलिजिबल ये भी सही है Ministry of Defence is not the nodal ministry. It is the Ministry of Home Affairs, which is the nodal ministry, not the Ministry of Defence. So this is incorrect. Option D is the correct answer. And now let's talk about question number six. Which railway station under East Coast Railway has been awarded the Green Railway Station certification with highest rating of platinum by IGBC, which is Indian Green Building Council? for adopting green concepts that are reducing the adverse environmental impacts so remember it is vishakhapatnam railway station of east uh, coast railways vishakhapatnam railway station has been awarded the green railway cert, uh, uh, station certification with highest with highest rating of platinum by igbc now of course uh, it is already mentioned in the question why this award why this certification has been given so for adopting green concepts 
that are reducing the adverse environmental impacts this certification has been given to Vishakhapatnam railway station and in the overall six environmental categories the railway station the Vishakhapatnam railway station has secured 82 points out of 100 okay now why Vishakhapatnam railway station has got this certification because it has taken some of these major steps uh, to reduce the adverse environmental impacts right these are Segregation of waste by constructing MRF shed, setting and operationalizing uh, operationalization of 500 KLD STP for station and colony water, sewage treatment plant STP, setting up of solar panels to conserve power, well developed passenger amenities and 100% LED lightings. So for these steps, this certification has been given to Vishakhapatnam railway station. Okay? Now talking about this green railway station rating system. So of course the objective is to, uh, to facilitate the adoption of green concepts concept so that we can reduce the adverse environmental impacts. Right? It addresses national priorities such as water conservation, handling of waste, energy efficiency, reduced use of fossil fuel, etc. Everything which are reducing the environmental impacts are under the ambit of this green railway station rating system and of course this system was developed by environmental directorate of indian railways in collaboration with igbc india green building council now do remember this organization environment directorate of indian railways this directorate works for reducing the adverse environmental impacts in all the railway stations across the country okay so therefore guys what is the correct answer the correct answer is again option e vishaka patnam railway station and now let's move ahead to those questions which do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ask anything related to examination you can follow me here right question number seven with which organization or organizations is Atal Innovation Mission of Niti Aayog collaborating to bring a change in the education sector by embedding future skills such as AI and tinkering in the formal curriculum. So basically now from now on what will happen the Atal Innovation Mission is taking major efforts so that they can include various new age technologies like AI like machine learning like tinkering in the formal curriculum and for that it has collaborated with CBSC and Intel India. So option D, A and B is the correct answer. Question number 8. Which ministry or ministries is are organizing the Bharat Par event in the front of Red Fort with the theme the incredible festivals of India from 26 to 31st of January as part of the Republic Day celebration. So you just have to identify the ministry which ministry is doing this. It is the Ministry of Tourism headed by G. Kishan Reddy which is organizing this Bharat Parv event and every year it is Ministry of Tourism which organizes this. Ministry of Tourism is the correct answer. And the last question for today and an important question, Inocovac is the world's first intranasal COVID-19 vaccine which has, which has received the approval for primary two dose schedule and as a heterologist heterologous booster dose it has been developed by bharat biotech international limited in collaboration with which psu under the department of biotech of ministry of science and technology so you just have to tell the name of that psu which has provided uh, help to bharat biotech international limited in developing inocovac right so this psu is biotechnology industry research assistance which works under the department of biotechnology of Ministry of Science and Technology. Okay, option C is the correct answer. So that's it for today's class. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. And today is the date is, is the day of budget. So in the evening at 6 p.m., I'll take a session on Union Budget 2023-24. So or, and of course, I should not tell you how much important budget is for all the examinations. Sare examination ke liye important hai. So. Uh, ko baje milte hai, fir, Union Budget 2023 Till then, keep watching Anujindal.in. Goodbye, take care, and God bless.